Today we're going to talk about the surprising science behind how fasting can improve your cognitive abilities and perhaps even ward off neurologic diseases like Alzheimer's disease. It's coming right up. A lot of people think that in order to perform well mentally, they need to eat. People say, well, I have to work, so I have to eat, but that's not actually true. In some cases, eating makes things worse. In mammals, when we don't eat, there's two organs that are preserved beyond everything else, and that's the testes as well as the brain, because we prioritize our reproductive ability, but also our brain power, because that's our main advantage against the other wild animals. So if we're cavemen, cavewomen, if we couldn't think as soon as we stopped eating, well, we'd very soon uh, lose that advantage. And even all the way back to the ancient Greeks, all the great thinkers, great philosophers, they all fasted in order to clarify their thoughts and improve their perceptive abilities. The great uh, mathematician Pythagoras, for example, famously asked his students to fast before coming to class because he thought that otherwise they wouldn't be smart enough in order to uh, do the task himself when he was trying to pass exams, he would fast. And to some extent, he, they thought of it as a way of diverting the blood away from the brain when you ate into your digestive system, and therefore when you didn't eat, you would leave more brain power available. While that may not be completely true, the fact is that their brain retains most of its functions when you don't eat, and in some cases may actually exceed them. In the biography Unbroken by Lauren Hillebrand, they talk about these Japanese prisoners of war um, during World War II. And these people were literally starving, yet they were performing these incredible mental feats. Uh, one person read a book entirely from memory, for example. One person learned the entire language of Norwegian in a week. And when he described it, it was very blasé. They said, well, this is just the incredible mental clarity of starvation. So they saw it every single day and they never thought to question it. So they also knew that when you're fasting, it seems like the brain is working overtime. Think about Thanksgiving, which is coming up or just past. After you eat a huge meal, do you really feel mentally sharp? Or do you feel a little bit tired, dull, really you just wanna sit down and watch some TV, for example? In the animal world, would you rather look like that lion who just ate, sort of sleepy, a little dull, or would you rather be the hungry wolf? Because it's the hungry wolf that you really need to be afraid of. So the question is, does fasting improve your mental abilities? And there's lots of different reasons why. Uh, Dr. Mark Mattson, a neuroscientist at the National Institute of Health, thinks that it improves your brain power significantly. He thinks that in the hippocampus, the beta hydroxybutyrate, which is a type of ketone, stimulates the production of BDNF, which is a brain-derived neurotrophic hormone. And this is a key factor in increasing brain power. Fasting does other things too. It may um, decrease uh, your glucose, it may decrease your insulin, it may decrease your mTOR. So these are other hormones. And as that happens, you increase your other hormones called the counter-regulatory hormones. So that is, you stimulate your sympathetic nervous system, you have more noradrenaline, and that may make you more focused, concentrate better, and be sharper. And this optimizes a lot of things in terms of neuron bioenergetics, neuroplasticity, neurogenesis, that is the growth of new neurons, and also neuron resilience, that is they're uh, better able to sustain damage. Dr. Mattson considers fasting any period of time 
that's long enough to stimulate ketones. And he thinks that's somewhere around 14, 16 hours. And with that metabolic switch from glucose to ketones, that's when you start to see some of the benefits in terms of the brain boosting effect. Both fasting as well as exercise trigger this neurotrophic uh, factor, BDNF, which has such critical role in nerve cell growth, but also learning and memory. In addition, fasting may also trigger autophagy and mitophagy. And we've talked about it in a previous video. This is that process of intracellular recycling where your body starts to break down all of these old subcellular parts. And then when you eat again, because growth hormone is going to be high, it's one of the counter regulatory hormones, then you're going to be able to rebuild. So this process of breaking down old junky proteins and rebuilding the necessary new ones, that's a process of regeneration and rejuvenation. And that's what is triggered by the fasting. So not only for the subcellular parts, but also for the mitochondria. And that's a process called mitophagy. And that may play a role in increasing the available energy to the brain, which is such a key factor in a disease such as Alzheimer's disease. There are plenty of studies, mostly on animals, that show that fasting can actually increase the resistance of neurons against damage. There's also other studies that suggest that you can also clear out some of these proteins that are accumulating in Alzheimer's disease. For example, one of them is through autophagy, but another one might be due to this aquaporin polarity and the clearance is through the cerebrospinal fluid. That is the fluid that bathes the brain. It, because you increase the polarity of these aquaporins, these uh, proteins, you're actually getting better flow and therefore you're able to clear out those uh, toxic proteins better so that they don't accumulate to cause the brain to be sort of all gummed up. There's also studies to show that alternate daily fasting, for example, might increase heat shock protein 70, and this helps clear some of this tau and amyloid protein. So all of these studies point to the fact that there's a lot that goes on in the body when you don't eat. It's a balance. You have to feed and you have to fast when you're feeding your body's mostly concerned with growth and building because food is coming in, building blocks are coming in, but equally important is this period of fasting where your body's going to go into this sort of cleansing maintenance mode, not only for the rest of the body, but for the brain too. Your body says, hey, there's no nutrients coming in, so your, your body starts to clear out all the unnecessary old sort of junky proteins, and this includes a lot of the other uh, tau and amyloid protein that accumulates in amyloid uh, disease. It, it's, it increases the growth of the mitochondria and therefore provides better energetics for the brain. That is, a lot of people feel that Alzheimer's is a disease not only of this accumulation of protein, but also it's not getting enough energy. And the provision of these ketones may actually also increase it. In the short term, what you see is this stimulation of counter-regulatory hormones, such as the sympathetic nervous system, such as noradrenaline, which is what gives people the focus and so on. So in the short term, if you have something important, if you have a big speech coming up, if you have a big presentation uh, coming up, hey, maybe the best thing for you to do is actually do some fasting. Let your body rev itself up. In the long term, you're getting into this cleaning cycle, and by doing that on a regular basis, it's possible that you could even prevent some of these other diseases. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you learned something. And if you're interested in fasting, you might want to check out this other video where I talked about fatty liver disease and how you can actually reverse that whole disease as well. I'll see you next week.